for a wagon that wasn't even on my radar to start with, it really has blown me away. It is a perfect model. Hi there everyone, I hope you're keeping well. It's certainly difficult times that we're living through at the moment, and I know a lot of you are probably getting quite bored and stir crazy, so we're trying to get some video content to alleviate some of that boredom. And today, thanks to the good kind folks at Acura Scale, they've sent on over a set of their PFA container flat wagons for me to review. And really interested to see these. I've reviewed all of the other Acura Scale wagons that are in their current range at the moment, and I've not found a dud yet. So come with me and we'll take a look at uh, this set of wagons, see what I think of them. And also don't forget that today's video is in association with our sponsor, Trainomatic, who make DCC decoders and accessories designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Check them out at trainomatic.com and also tramfabrique.nl. Links are in the description box down below. Come with me, let's take a look at some Acura Scale goodies. <laughs> So here we have it, we've got the uh, three wagon set from uh, Acura Scale and they're really kind of them to send this over for review. And looking on the end of the box, we've got um, PFO 12A, PFA container flat wagon and uh, there's the catalogue code underneath. And the G at the end means that there's different running number sets that you can get. So you can actually make up a full train really easily. And a curious scale do this across the range and it's a really good thing that they do. It comes in this really shiny outer sleeve which is probably causing a lot of issues with the camera. So I'm going to straight up remove that and the box itself oozes quality right from the start. And I know a lot of people go, why are you gushing about a box that you're gonna take them out of? But for me, the whole package is, some, is quite important to me. When it comes in a box this strong, this well thought out, uh, it, it says to me, that a lot of thought has gone into every stage of this wagon's production. And I've seen it coming through from some other manufacturers, but every time I get a model in a, a well-made box like this, I know I'm not going to be disappointed because if they take that much attention on the box, it shows just how proud that they are of the model that's inside. They've got quite an innovative inner tray there, which actually makes it really easy to access the wagons. Um, and this is it, the British Fuels liveried version of the containers on the PFA flats. Now, there is in here underneath, I'm just going to get all these out first, unwrap them very carefully from the plastic, and uh, I'm going to put them out upside down so they don't roll off. Um, and then I'm going to fish in here because there is actually a history of these wagons contained in the box. Uh, but first up, what I really can feel is the, the weight to these wagons. You might think, oh, that's a bit of a weedy little wagon. Where's the weight going to be? But I don't know how they've done it. I guess it must be a die cast metal body. In fact, it does feel like it's die cast metal. But the weight that they've crammed into such a small wagon is really quite commendable. And down here at the bottom, We've got the uh, now familiar uh, history of the wagon. And there's also a tiny pack of, um, I think they're three link couplings there. If that's the route coupling wise you want to go, they actually give you a full set in a, a little bag there. We've got this lovely photograph of them in, I believe that's their original livery, the car woods. And uh, it gives a history of the wagons. And what actually surprised me is that they were introduced much earlier than I realized, 1986. And surprisingly, that does mean that they fall within the very end of the period that I model. And I guess I'd overlooked these wagons because I'd assumed that they were much more modern than that. But actually, they're within the era that I model certainly depending on livery options. Now the British Fuels livery that comes in this pack is a little bit later and the history that it details here does tell you which wagons went where and when. So um, it is a pretty good guide to um, uh, how appropriate different liveries are to your layout. 
On the other side, again, it just shows how proud they are of what's gone into this model. We've got this full exploded diagram of all of the components. And it's amazing when you look at it that for such a, a, a diminutive wagon that really could have been done so basically, how many parts actually go into making this so true to life? And that's what I like about Acura Scale. There is no compromise on getting things right. It's not good enough to be nearly right. It has to be totally right. So one of the things I just noticed, and it's possibly a minor thing, one of the buffers was missing on this. You probably saw it on the original shot. I've been and had a hunt through the box and I found the buffer. So I'm going to put this down to possibly, I did briefly get these out um, up in uh, Weir Yard a little bit earlier on to run them and um, so I'm prepared to um, uh, put it down to maybe me just being a bit a bit exuberant to uh, get these out but I have to show you this because you might see it in the video. The springs come out but it is to, certainly possible to glue that back in if needs be. It's not a major detraction but I have to be honest and bring that to your attention. So let's look to the wagons. Each of these has a different identity and I'm just going to try and put these up on their sides and you can see there immediately each one is different and when you buy the different uh, suffixed sets, uh, this is set G, um, it does give you completely different numbered wagons and I guess it's possible if you bought all of the wagons in all of the liveries they're possibly all completely different running numbers so you would still have unique trains. As I said before, the weight on these is quite terrific. Um, it's a die-cast chassis block, which is giving it that weight. But I love the, the way that these, these wagons, when the containers aren't on them, you see all of the brake detail. And that is really quite exquisite. I've often said before that Acura Scale are the Rolls Royce of wagons. And actually, I'm going to upgrade them even further looking at these. They are the Aston Martin V12 Vantage of wagons. There's certainly nothing that I can really fault in there. They look just like a real wagon. What we can see there is it's incredibly authentic to the top-down view. And actually, even though you get a full set of containers, I think that these would look equally at home running around with no container load on whatsoever. I'm not entirely sure how in practice that would work in real life, because I suspect that the containers kind of semi-permanently lived on a wagon. The use for these was in moving domestic coal and uh, smokeless fuels, either to delivery points for distribution for household coal, or indeed to the docks um, for export. So I suspect that these containers tended to stick with the wagons and only briefly got taken off making full use of the ISO container system to be able to unload them. It really was quite an innovative design taking a lot of the good aspects of a system that was already very much in place and turning it to an alternative uh, wagon traffic flow. The containers that come with these are fully detailed inside and out and really nicely done so we get this concertina effect of the, the ribbed steel of an ISO container accurately given both inside and out and it it strikes me it would be almost a shame to fill this with coal to hide some of that detail on the inside. The gussets as well, uh, correctly overhang, are incredibly thin and fine, but they're, they're quite robust too, looking at those. They're, they're not easily broken. They do seem to have a lot of inherent strength, despite their near-scale thickness. And I really do like these. They've got the uh, accurate tampo printed rendition of the, the numbers in there and if we look there they are different for each of the three different containers that come with these wagons just like they would be in real life. Looking to the other end as well I noticed that the containers they have um, this representation of the opening doors that um, some ISO containers have. And I guess that uh, rather than just being tippled upside down, these could just be end on tips. I'm not actually sure how the unloading facilities would go with these, but certainly these containers have the, the different ends. Each end is different, as you can see there, which is really nicely done. 
Looking at the side, this is an area too with the tampo printing that has been really well done. And actually, you might not realize quite how difficult it is to do tampo printing over an undulating surface like this and still get it completely sharp. It really is well done. I'm looking there, it's perfect. There's no fuzziness whatsoever. Think about it, the tampo printing block is kind of a strange foam that has the raised section for what the actual paint is going to sort of like squish onto the thing. But when you introduce these undulations, that makes it a very complex process. Even if you have a cutout in the tampo printing blocks, which I suspect is what they use to get it so sharp, you have to align this container in the machine that's doing it so accurately. One slight move either side and you would end up with this all going to pot. So I, I can appreciate just how well done that tampo printing is to get it so perfect on every single container in this set. That is just so nicely done. Moving away from the containers back to the wagons, looking to the sides, we've got a wealth of tampo printed detail on these too. And I've got every faith that under close magnification that is all gonna be completely legible. It's not just nearly right, it is right. It's like they've got the real wagon and put it through a shrink ray to get this. Like I said, it's the V12 Aston Martin Vantage of models. The wheels too, they are turned metal and they're really nice. They're kind of a low profile, I guess, to get the whole package to fit within the UK loading gauge. The real wagons had to have these dinky little small wheels and Acura scale is accurately tooled up for these. We've got all the brake rigging in there, nicely done. And I can see there's actually springs and all sorts. I'm just trying to work out what that spring in there is for. It's for the self-centering. So these wagons feature the NEM pocket couplings. At the moment, it comes factory fitted with the slimline tension locks. And they're in these NEM pockets, but they're fitted to these self-centering uh, mechanisms, which actually means that these will go around a much tighter curve than you might imagine without any kind of issues with buffer lock. So not only do they look right, but they will run right very, very reliably indeed. Look into these brake levers. These are all separately applied metal parts by the feel of it. They're really nicely done. Even these steps at the end, they're so, so fine metal uh, additions. The brake pipe work, we looked at that a little bit from above, but below, gosh, these it's, <laughs> I almost want to leave one on my layout upside down just to show off how fine the actual uh, uh, brake detail is on the underside. It seems such a shame that you will never in ordinary working practices uh, get to see any of this. The buffers themselves, they're fine turned metal heads. They are sprung, but it's not a, a deal clincher to have sprung buffers, but they are sprung. We've got some very fine air brake hoses there on the buffer beam. They are ready attached and they don't interfere with the uh, tension lock couplings there. The containers, they are actually a really positive fit into the top of these. When you, you line them up and put them down, just make sure that they don't go over these very fine metal white guide pieces. They actually have quite a positive lock in place so they're not going to slide off and they do feel so nice when they're in place so these wagons will trundle round without any risk of them sliding off to one side when loaded up with the container they really do look the part and i guess this is how mostly how they would be seen in traffic Altogether, I think this is an amazing package from Acura Scale. They have once again outdone themselves with a really interesting wagon prototype and one which I wasn't really massively aware of until I saw these models. And it's also interesting to note just actually how applicable they are to the period that I model. So even if you are a BR Blue into BR sectorization modeler, there are some liveries of these which will go a long way to giving you some extra variety to your rolling stock. And we come now to the scores. And for these wagons, well, I'm really impressed with the finish. The finish itself, all of the lettering is there as it should be. 
the black that the wagons come in is really quite nice. It's kind of a satin finish. And a lot of these wagons, I guess, would get slightly oily, slightly grimy in service. Not necessarily massively rusted, uh, but certainly this is a really great base to move on to some quite subtle weathering techniques. The containers too, I am immensely impressed by these. For me, almost the containers are very much the highlight, if only because the tempo finish on the British Fuels logo is so well done and what is actually a really difficult uh, thing to get a good tempo printed finish on. So for finish for me, um, I'm guessing the only thing that I could criticise on these, and again I must stress that this is unique to, to this particular set, and I have to take into account that it may have been partly my fault, but I've got the one buffer that's come loose. So I'm going to give this a 9.8 .8 out of 10. Functionality. I really love the positive way that these containers lock to the wagons. They're just so easy to get in place and they keep in place so well. Trundling around the track as well, the uh, self-centering slimline tension lock couplings are really, really good. So all in all, there is nothing I can fault in this category. So for functionality, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. For ease of use, well, it's really handy that Acura Scale give you that uh, little bit of detail on the history of the wagons, because this shows that actually these are very applicable for more periods than you'd think. And it's also the case that it mentions that some liveries may have carried over, so earlier liveries would still be okay to be run with the later liveries too. And these cover an amazingly long period from 1986 right up to the present day. Acura Scale do make so many different livery versions, there's a lot to choose from. And one of our upcoming reviews next week will be a different liveried version of these wagons, so stay tuned for those. So ease of use. Well, the Cura Scale have made it ever so easy to work out which versions are applicable for what you need. So again, 10 out of 10. Next up is aesthetics. And I'm sure you'll agree that these are a perfect rendition of the PFA. And I may sound like I'm gushing, but it's true. And you know, to level with you, this is a wagon that I wasn't actually particularly interested in picking up because I felt that it was a little bit too modern for my era. But having them here, it turns heads. These wagons are amazing. If anything is going to turn a modeler onto the more modern period, these wagons are it. The Aston Martin V8 Vantage or V12 Vantage with the full optional extras package, the James Bond ejector seat and machine guns in the wings. This really is bells, whistles, knobs and, and everything else. I, I'm, I'm blown away with them. They just look so nice, so perfect. And even the bits and pieces on them that you wouldn't normally get to see, like all that brake rigging there, even the underside, it's perfect in every way. There just isn't anything that I can find fault with. So for aesthetics, 10 out of 10. The very last category is value for money. Now these are available for around the 65 to 70 pound mark, depending on where you pick them up from. They come as three wagon packages, so let's have a think about that. That's actually 20, 22, something like that pounds per wagon. That's not actually too bad. In this modern day and age, that's roughly what a lot of wagons from other manufacturers are costing. Uh, but with these, you get a really great, pretty much perfect package. There's not a lot to fault with the actual wagons, if at all. And so that price, whilst in a three pack it makes it look quite expensive, isn't actually as expensive as you'd think. So for value for money, I'm going to give these a 9.6 out of 10. That brings us to the overall score. And it's actually an amazing 49.4. For a wagon that wasn't even on my radar to start with, it really has blown me away. And that is reflected in these scores that have given it. On a number of categories, I really just couldn't fault it. It is a perfect model. I could see this PFA wagon still being made in this form from these moulds in 10, 20, 30, 40 years time. Because why would anybody bother to 
update it. You can't improve on perfection. And what we've got here is pretty much perfection. If it hadn't been for that one buffer that was loose, I think we may even have had a nearly full house. But certainly, I think this is rapidly becoming my wagon choice of the year. I hope you really enjoyed that video and if you really like these wagons don't forget to check them out through the links that we've got down below that will take you to affiliates where you can pick yourself up a set of these great wagons. And also don't forget to check out the links to our sponsor Trainomatic and Tram Fabrique. And in the meantime you take really good care of yourself. Don't forget to uh, try and alleviate those lockdown blues by uh, watching plenty of decent video content. And we've got a list on our website of all of the live streams from a great number of different channels to keep you interested throughout the week and give you that daily dose of human contact that's very important in these tough times. Don't forget also to like this video, share it too, really important, let other people know some of the magic that's going on here on YouTube. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel. You'll be the first to know about new videos as and when we put them up. But until next time, you take really good care of yourself and I hope to see you back here next time. Bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, ooorail.co.uk, Tepic, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Peter Bolton, Brian Smith, and Brian and Dorothy Mudd. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.